Hello. Hey, John, how are you? Good, how are you? Sorry. I'm was... great. I'm great. I'm so excited to talk to you because I'm oh, a good. huge fan. So sorry if I'm going to be fangirling out. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Love your work. Um, okay, I got I to gotta start by asking you because I'm looking at, you know, uh, Gone with the Night and then your last film, Abandoned. Are you a scary movie kind of guy? Like you go to these remote places. Like, do you have you not learned your lesson? <laughs> no, my a lot of the characters I play have not learned their lesson, or, <laughs> or they just have to learn it over and over again. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but do you like these kind of like? Is this a genre that you really you know are liking now more than? Yeah, I mean, I've always you know ever since I was a kid and a teenager, I loved scary movies. I mean, I was terrified of them. I wasn't like a scary movie fan until like my my teens. A lot of kids yeah. at school when I was younger could stomach the scary movies. I couldn't. It took me years to be able to face them because I was so terrified. But as I right. got more into movies and filmmaking, I started to really respect and appreciate uh, what went into making horror movies and what what goes into that genre. And uh, it took me a long time, but I about uh, gosh, about eight years or so, I, I, I finally started to make you know scary movies and be in them as an actor, which has been yeah. really really fun. So um, I don't necessarily seek them out; they just kind of have found their way to me as an actor through the years. And um, it's always really exciting to get, you know, uh, a, a script like Gone in the Night, you get like a, a new voice in the genre. You know, Eli Horowitz, I think is, is incredibly talented. And yeah, it, it is such a kind of understanding of the, the kind of Twilight Zone element of a good kind of genre, kind of mystery thriller, uh, scary movie. So um, yeah, I, I, uh, I've always liked the genre, but it's been a real treat to get to work in it more and more as an actor. Yeah, and also, um, it's interesting, too, because you also have chosen some projects over the last few years, whatever, these young up-and-coming directors, you know, first-timers and things like that. That's got to be exciting, I think, to hear this fresh perspective. Absolutely, and it kind of, you know, it keeps you young, in a sense, which is funny because it's so much about the, the film is about aging and staying excited and staying engaged with what yeah. you're doing. And I love working with, with up-and-coming filmmakers because... There is a real purity of heart uh, to the proceedings when you're working with someone who's just getting going. Uh, it is a weird business and uh, yeah. it is easy to get a little jaded and a little disillusioned. And I like working with the next wave of filmmakers because uh, I always, you know, a, a friend of mine who's an actor works with a lot of up and coming filmmakers and he's very successful, you know, and he could be doing kind of anything he wanted to do. And I asked him once, like, why do you keep making movies with such kind of green filmmakers? And he was like, well, I mean, I, I had to start somewhere. Everyone has mm. to start somewhere. You know, Spielberg, Scorsese, everybody has to take a chance on some young filmmaker. You never know uh, where they're headed or what they're going to do. So if you get along with them and you respond to the material that they're working on, why not jump in together and try to make something? Well, for sure. But you know what? It goes the other way, too. And I, I was going to get to this later. But when you look at your career, John, OMG, like OMG is all I have to say. And, you know, you're a young buck. You're you're in this play on Broadway. Oh, Spring Awakening, you know, uh, you know, the newsroom, the West Wing. And need I go on and on? You look at somebody like Aaron Serkin, who clearly, you know, took a took a risk on you. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. I had not done a ton of television when Aaron put me in the newsroom, uh, just a few guest spots here and there, but I certainly had done no series regular work. Um, and it's true, you know, everybody needs a shot. Uh, everybody, that, that's how it all begins uh, in any field, but especially in the entertainment industry, because so many people don't want to, so often people are reluctant to work with someone unless they've like really, you know, proven themselves yeah. already. Um, but, you know, if that, if, if we, if we adhered only to that, then there would be no breakout performances and there would be no young emerging talent. So I think it's always important to, uh, I think, turn, uh, turn the focus to who's emerging and who's working on something new, who's working on something exciting. Yeah. Um, and for this one, Gone with the Night, you know, Gone in the Night, um, you know, so many twists and turns as it's, it was really, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. But you get to work with the great Winona Ryder. I mean, okay, first I have to ask you, were you, were you trying to get Stranger Things secrets out of her, first of all? <laughs> you know, I never, I did, I never pushed because I know, <laughs> how, I know how tight that lid is over at Netflix. Uh, and I just thought, you know, if she wants to share anything with me, yeah. that's great. If she doesn't, that's fine. I didn't, I didn't want to push or be a pest of any sorts, but I did get to go to the premiere. That was exciting. She invited me to the season four Very premiere cool. back in, in May. 
um, in New York City. So I got to be a guest of hers at the uh, Stranger Things premiere, which was very exciting. And one of the kids, <laughs> Gaten, who's in the show, he came yes. up to me and he's a big Spring Awakening fan. So yes, he, he is. Well, he's, he's going on Broadway well, like, now in Dear Evan Hansen. He's Dear Evan Hansen, yeah. 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 And he came up to me and he was like, John, great to see you. And then he was like, how did you get in here? <laughs> And I was like, Winona invited me. <laughs> yeah, I've got some schlep. I mean, come like, on. You don't get the pull in this business, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But working with her, I mean, first of all, nobody does a, I'm like a freaked out face better than Winona Ryder. Right. I'm sorry. Like she wins that award if there's any, yeah. you know, awards. But you know, what was it like working with her? She's, again, been in the business since a little, oh. little nothing, you know? <laughs> I, I adore her. I always have. I mean, I, you know, I, I, was, I came of age in the mid 90s. And so like her movies uh, were so important to me growing up. I was such a fan of her work, still am. Yeah. Uh, I just think that she's unparalleled and unrivaled in the kind of arc that she has had in her career. Um, <laughs> and it was a dream. I mean, such a dream to work with her. I couldn't believe it when I got the script. Um, you know, I read it, I started to read it and my agent sent me a note and said, hey, just so you know, like when you were Winona's choice for this role, wow. I was like, wait, wait a minute. You're, you're telling me that Winona Ryder knows who I am. Uh, you know, that was exciting enough for me. So then to get to work with her and, you know, she's just so generous and giving on set and such a sweet person. And, um, you know, we bonded and we hit it off over music tastes and some of our art tastes. So we were just talking, like we would be talking in between scenes all day long. She would be telling me stories about her life and her career. And I was just a very happily captive audience. Um, That's fantastic. Never wanted it to end. It, it was really a dream working with her. Good stuff, John. That's that's amazing, and and also also in this film, Dermot Mulroney. I mean, yeah. come on, right? Yeah, I mean, he's also an icon of that era, and uh, to see them working together again, having not worked together, I think since How to Make an American Quilt, I think it was nineteen. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, to see them reunite on set was really special too. Dermot's yeah. so cool. He's such a workhorse actor. Like. He's just been working for years. He's always yeah. kind of pushing himself and doing cool things. It was great to be around him. And then, and then Owen Teague and Brian Chu, the, 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 they're the kind of, they're yes. the next wave actors of this film. You know, they're the younger generation technically. And they were just stunning. I was in awe of them uh, all yeah. day on set. I remember telling them one day in the van ride home, I was like, man, you know, I think if, if, if everyone had your work ethic, if, if every young actor I worked with had, your work ethic and professionalism and dedication, then I, I feel like we're going to be okay. The art form is going to be okay. If, if, if wow. We like you Amazing. Thought. Yeah. It felt very tight performances, really good. And, and uh, yeah, really, really, really good film and good, good, uh, good on you for doing it. Okay. we got to go back down memory lane. I have to, sorry. Yeah. I have to. Okay. So right. let's start with spring awakening because yeah. I almost lost my shit when HBO put that reunion on. Oh, I know. Okay. I think I've watched it four times, but I have oh, to tell nice. you, I was in the audience you know, on Broadway when you guys first hit that stage. Oh, so wow. I remember seeing that. I exactly remember, like I sat in the balcony on the side. I remember it so vividly because I love that show so much. And w watching all of you, like, who are these amazing people? You know, John Gallagher, Jonathan Brock, uh, Leah Michelle, on and on and on. Honestly, to have done this reunion, like to be able, what was that like, John? It was so overwhelming. I, I just kept thinking the whole time about how lucky we are that it all worked out. You know, obviously, especially in this, the last few years that we've been going through, I mean, yeah. the, 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 the desperation and the tentativeness of an ongoing pandemic. Uh, live theater has been a thing that struggled to get back on its feet. So when we booked the, the reunion concert, you know, we didn't know if, we, if it was going to work, if it was going to happen, were we going to get shut down, was someone going to get COVID and, you know, lo and behold, it was just felt like we were, we got so lucky that week, everything fell into place, we only had a couple of rehearsals, we hadn't seen each other together under one roof in 15 years, we hadn't right. seen songs in 15 years, the fact that it fell into place the way it did, and we had this amazing sold out night on Broadway, and then yeah. we raised tons of money for the Actors Fund, which is a great charitable organization, and we got filmed by HBO for a documentary that came out a few months later, it was just like, I couldn't believe our good fortune, you know, yeah. it was a real gift. Oh God, I just loved it so much. And and I'm yeah, so just glad. this, you know, and and my God, like you were the Tony for that. Like, wow. True. I did. I know. The, it's like the one thing I've ever won, other than some <laughs> prizes at a carnival in Wilmington, Delaware, when I was a kid. 
Well, yeah, th those are important. Those are important. No, yeah, no, no, you, you got more. You got more awards coming. More accolades uh, coming my way, maybe. You do, you do. Yeah. Okay, then we got to move on to Aaron Sorkin, who's like yeah. my absolute like god, as far as I'm concerned. I've been able yeah. to interview many, many times over the years, and he's just the most brilliant writer. But when you work with somebody like that, especially earlier in your career, he's got obviously a style of writing, a way he wants you to like the walk and talk and the fast talking, and you've got to know your lines. How did that? work prepare you for what you do now oh it, it, i mean it was it was massive it, it was very very uh in, in, insightful in so many ways and informative uh just to kind of be on a film set uh or a television set rather but it, you know felt like we were making these short movies every week yeah uh, to, to to have that kind of dialogue you know i came in the obviously came up in the theater and so i'm used to large swaths of dialogue you know sometimes you'll be in a film and you'll you'll only get maybe two to three pages to shoot sometimes in a day. Yeah. Um, and so you won't really get like dialogue that you can sink your teeth into, which is my favorite thing as an actor mm -hmm. is the language. And, and and what do I have to say? And how do I say it? And how do I convey it? And how does it tell the story? And you're just given, you know, like the, you know, the keys to a Cadillac when on an yeah. Aaron Sorkin set, when, when, when the, one of those scripts falls into your lap. Um, so it, it taught me a lot about preparation and it also taught me a lot about um, intention because his dialogue is so rapid fire and so fast. And uh, sometimes you just kind of have to plug yourself in, pick up your cues, kind of say it. It, it, it does, it, it honestly, it, it usually works better the faster you say it. That's kind of just how he writes. He's, he's admitted it, you know, um, and we felt that too. But then you also got to like make sure that you're also kind of intellectually doing the job as the storyteller. So I always felt like that was my challenge on the newsroom was like, how do I deliver this heightened Aaron Sorkin dialogue and still kind of make it sound like a human being is saying yeah. it? Um, because the, the the trick is you want to make sure that you still sound human because you don't want to become like a just a, like a uh, an automated robot or something. Uh, in the yeah, world. yeah. So I, I I need to know like of all the amazing actors that you've worked with over the years, you know, from Jeff Daniels to like I mean just so many great opportunities. Who have you learned the most from? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, oh, there's, I mean, so many. I mean, I, 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 the, someone who's popping into my mind right now is I've got to work with Michael Shannon a few times. We were, yeah. we were on yeah. Broadway together. We played brothers. Yes. In a Eugene O'Neill play. And, and that was, that was incredible. Uh, Mike Shannon, Mark Rylance. I did a play with Mark Rylance once, and obviously they're they're titans of the uh, of the art form. I mean, yeah. they're some of the best that we have in the industry. Um, so being able to work alongside them, Richard Jenkins, and oh, me, another yeah veteran. With my parents in a miniseries once. Yes, so yes. Getting to be in scenes with the two of them. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. So th <laughs> those are just a few that I've learned an awful lot from. Amazing. So what's what's coming up next? And are we going to see you back on Broadway? And uh, no, that's a really you've got good a movie. Question. You've got a movie coming out with Ariana DeBose. Is I do. Yeah, we shot a movie last year called ISS that takes yeah. place on the International Space Station. I don't know what's happening with that one. I know that they're finishing up editing it right now. So I think that we'll probably find out in the coming months where that one's going to land. And then yeah. I just did my third. Uh, I just did my third musical with Michael Mayer, who directed Spring Awakening. We premiered a new show called Swept Away at the Berkeley Rep Theater earlier this year. And Ooh. John Logan wrote the book. Nice. And it songs by the Avett brothers. And that was oh. really, really, uh, that was a dream. That was so much fun to be back on stage. I mean, I hadn't done a show. I hadn't acted on stage in like six years. So that was, that was a real treat. So hopefully that's gonna find its way to New York City sometime in the coming years. Well, you know, we do have an amazing theater scene here in Toronto. So, uh, you know, I will personally bring you guys and, you know, Talk to hey, the Burgesses. I love Toronto. Yeah, yeah. My friend I is mean, there right now doing a and and Juliet. Okay, I was just gonna go there. I saw it last night. Oh, you I'm did. Still, I'm still goosebumping. Like, it is freaking amazing. Oh, great. And when you guys get it on Broadway, it's. I can't it's wait to go. Hamilton. It's the next Hamilton. It's my amazing. friend, my friend Stark Sands plays Shakespeare. Yes in that yeah. and we were just in swept away together uh out in berkeley rap so he's a he's good amazing uh, the whole yeah. cast is you've got to see it when it oh, comes good. There. oh i'm excited i can't wait yeah it's fantastic well listen i've taken a lot of your time and i you know like i said it was fangirling i got no, to get all pleasure. those 
I had to get all those answers in, but um, I'm sure ISS will be, uh, they're going to ramp that up, especially since she's won the Oscar I know, now. she's and, a big superstar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so are you, my friend. Oh, uh, it's such a you. pleasure, and I love watching you and everything you do. And uh, yeah, come visit us in Toronto. I'll take you for a coffee, I promise. Perfect, I'd love that. <laughs> okay, John, okay. thank you for your time. Best Thanks of luck with everything. Thanks okay. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye.